Hello everyone, welcome to Kolkata. So this is the city of joy and I know you will uh, enjoy visiting the places and your food here. So I will be uh, discussing uh, the challenges in retinal surgery in high myopia. So basically I will uh, discuss anatomical variations, challenges and how to manage those case things. So anatomical variants, variations are that these eyes have unusually long axial length, the retina is thin, the sclera is thin, the muscles are thin and even conjunctiva is thin. The architecture of sclera may be anomalous and fundus is depigmented, contrast is not there, RP pump is poor and there may be a strong anomalous vitreoretinal adhesion, there might be vitreosysis. Vitreous base is usually posterior precipitate, there is, uh, there is posterior staphyloma and optic nerve may be already compromised, internal limiting membrane may be thin and fragile. And specifically these eyes might have had previous reparative surgeries including multifocal IOLs, some of these eyes may be one or none eye. Uh, there might be glaucoma and as we all know they have high risk of giant retinal tear, retinal detachment, uh, myopic tracts and maculopathy. Visual potential can be uh, limited because of structure and functional problems and many of these cases patients are fake young patients and some cases have really thin retina with chronic retinal detachment. Some cases pupil might not dilate well and as I showed because the contrast is poor, break detection might be difficult and uh, CNBM, myopic CNBMs can be really very difficult to uh, see and myopic traction maculopathy also it is very difficult to detect clinically unless you do an OCT. So in buckling the tissue might be so thin that there might be uh, globe perforation while uh, you are doing block or you are suturing the sclera, uh, passing the needle through the, through the sclera and rectus muscle may be damaged or disinserted and uh, in some cases because I, uh, the speculum can go behind the globe and there might be severe pain and globe luxation during the surgery buckling is, itself. During partial vitrectomy, there uh, the sclerotomies might leak when we remove the sclerotomy and reaching retinal tissue might be difficult with the standard uh, length uh, instruments. Induction of PVD and also the progression of PVD anteriorly is difficult and anterior vitreous base may be, uh, dissection might be difficult in fake patients. So, uh, Visibility of internal mem limiting membrane is poor and myopic traction maculopathy or uh, pubiosis may deru and uh, while operating macular hole the ILM flap may get uh, lost. Because the globes are larger they might need higher amount of uh, silicon oil. Silicon oil may not tamponate because they are in the posterior staphyloma where the areas are irregular and subretinal fluid may resolve late. So PVR, chances of PVR might be high and supra, in such cases might develop supracordial hemorrhage also. So how do I manage my cases in scleral buckling? So try to hold with non tooth forceps, conjunctiva and avoid cheese wiring. Pull the muscles gently and avoid obviously thin areas or staphylomotor areas while passing the needle. So in sclerotomy, we are using scler uh, small gauge, 25 gauge. You can put the wound at a little posterior to the uh, limbus because the ora is a little posterior and the entry may be biplanar or triplanar. Long and uh, long entry will help this help seal the uh, sclerotomy. And if it is leaking, if there is a uh, doubt, definitely suture. It will resolve and vital 70. So. <coughs> Whether there will be difficulties, you can ascertain by getting axial length or and axial length also helps because these cases most likely will need cataract surgery later and ultrasound helps you to know the uh, anatomy of the posterior staphyloma. We, we, uh, what we do when, when I do not, cannot reach, I usually remove the trochar and cannula and enlarge the wound and go through the same instrument, same low gauge, inst uh, small gauge instruments. You can use 20 uh, gauge instrument also. Sometimes you can depress the sclera at, at your uh, working end and then you can try to reach the thing, but that actually distorts the cornea and uh, limits the view. Specialized long, long straight or carved instruments are available from uh, MED-1 and the uh, distance angle between the superior two sclerotomies can be increased to help in maneuvering. So P for PVD induction, definitely triamcinolone is needed and vitreosis might be there. You might need to uh, repeat the staining again. And I do it with uh, uh, 
irrigated contact lens magnified uh, post, for posterior view. The sometimes silicon tip extrusion cannula or internal limiting membrane uh, forceps or MBR blade may be needed to uh, insert the PVD. So during injection of the uh, dye, there might be retinal damage. Inject slowly, and there are special instruments including uh, drip droppers and dual bore cannulas. Uh, and uh, these cases need staining and it need to be kept longer because the uh, mac macula itself they might be very much deep and pigmented and if we do not stain then it will not be visible it will be very difficult and sometimes uh, we can stain under air to prevent injury we should start wanting to have phobia and if to initiate the ilm pill uh, we can use a ddms or a penis loop so if you start from superiorly, the uh, instruments themselves can uh, place a shadow or hell, uh, reduce the visibility. And because these are uh, long eyes, you, you'll have to flap, uh, lift the flap a bit more. If there is retinal detachment, you can use PFCL and then uh, try um, PFCL as a third hand, and uh, it will help your uh, ILM peeling. Some illuminator filters are available for better visualization, but they might reduce the visibility also. So intraoperative opt optical corneal tomography is there, which will help whether the uh, help to know intraoperatively. 3D visual assistance are also promising. In phobiosis to prevent macular hole, we can do phobia sparing island peeling for macular holes. Large macular, even large macular holes, inverted island flaps can close the hole. And other uh, newer modalities which I have not tried is platelet rich plasma, autologous blood, or other tissues, including retinal tissue or empty membrane graft. So my take-home message will be place sclerotomies literally posteriorly. You can remove the cannulas and mildly analyze the wound to uh, get reach of the posterior pole, stain the vitreous and ILM, and if repeat if needed, keep it longer time. Use posterior pole les uh, lenses, and definitely patience is needed. Do not hurry, because thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kaushik, for a nice talk. So. Uh, well, have you? Uh, I would like to just add over here. So, in cases when we are not able to reach the posterior pole, so as he said, that some of the things that we can do is probably that we can make cannulas, uh, the, the ports at 4 mm. What we can do is that we can probably go even beyond that. So, the larger eyes would have uh, limbus to aura distance of more than 4 mm. So, we can probably make one port, indent and see where exactly is the aura, and then we can make a port which is at maybe 5 mm, which is still safer, but then we'll be able to go to the posterior pole. So that is one more difference that we can make, apart from the ones he said that we can indent the sclera and we can do a 20 gauge instrument. Uh, Dr. Anand, would you like to add something? Hi, yeah. The which you mentioned, that I think is more. 5 mm, the problem also is that the base sometimes can be thin, and you can also create a dialysis if you go a little posterior. So that's the only little caution I'd add. But other thing is true, you have to uh, indent a bit. Okay, And this is one place where uh, posterior those lenses help where you don't have a sharp because otherwise your instrument is almost vertical and it's touching the biome lens. So having these posterior, especially if you have to tackle my big traction macular or macular disorder, this is a detachment is fine, but otherwise if you're doing posterior pole pathology, then having a posterior pole lens uh, helps a lot. And Dr. Kaushik, would you say anything about, do you have any uh, problem in finding the break in such high myopes? Yes. It anything that you'd like to add? Uh, it is actually difficult. Uh, so preoperative workup will be extremely important and definitely do indirect ophthalmoscopy with indentation. And uh, sometimes if laser is not coming, you can use cryo. So that helps. That is also why I did not mention. But if you are, laser is not coming, do, just do cryo. It will work. Okay. So if you're not trying to, uh, if you're not able to see the break because of the contrast that you have, then what you can do is probably inject uh, subretinal uh, BBG or a dye and then try to look from where exactly it is coming out. So that is called the Schlerin's effect and that can also help you find the break so that then you can probably laser that break because if you're not laser the break then the high chances that you will have a redetachment. Anyway, so thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank